Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. Today we're going to be focusing upon virtual learning and intercultural global citizenship and be brought up to date on some very interesting concepts. My guest is an expert on this particular topic. Dr. Oni Chong is the founder, chairperson, and president of IVECA. Dr. Chong is based in the United States and she serves as the CEO of IVECA Korea. Dr. Chong, welcome to today's Global Connections program. Thank you so much for your invitation. I appreciate <laughs> you being with me. I was, it's such a long title here, IVECA. <laughs> I was right. going to read it and I thought, you could, what is IVECA? You can just tell us what it is. Yeah, IVECA, <laughs> when you say IVECA, it's simple, but many people uh -huh. think, what is the actual meaning? So it is intercultural or international mm -hmm. virtual exchange of classroom activities. So the IVECA is connecting schools in different countries, especially it partner up classrooms in different areas of the uh, world and then provide the curriculum and then let them study together and they share their school life through that uh, platform. That's intercultural uh, virtual exchange of classroom <laughs> activities. So any classroom, classroom activities can be shared. Uh, through the virtual platform. Mm -hmm. yep. how, did, how did you get the idea to develop this concept? Where did this, this come from? Did, was this something that was just of great interest to you? Or how did the idea generate? Well, it can be a very long story, oh. but <laughs> well, we <have> <laughs> yeah, try minutes. to be short. Uh, <laughs> when I was in Korea, actually, in late 20th century, actually, I was a teacher in Korea. And uh, we were trained to be a a good quality teacher. It could, Korea is very much pay strong attention to quality mm -hmm. teacher uh, produce, uh, th training. So I, when once I graduated the teacher's college, I just learned that Korean government started to teach, implement English education into elementary school. I was going to be an elementary school teacher, but I was not trained for that. So I, by myself, um, visited some uh, private English institute to build up my English skill. It was my first time ever talk to people from different country, my English teacher at the time. Mm -hmm. So I realized how different it is to just learn something out of a book versus really communicating with others. And I learned, I s could see myself changing my perspective about myself actually how I perceive Korea culture, history, everything, because others' perspectives were different, but I have not ever communicated with others. So that was kind of realization going on. And I thought uh, to be a good teacher and then to a good educator, I thought we should prepare something like this, help students to really understand different perspective by directly communicating with each other. So that was my initial motivation. And when I was looking at the world happening, there are so many conflicts going on. And I remember one specific documentary. Uh, they were interviewing world leader in Middle Eastern country, Asia, and the Latin America, everywhere. One thing I remember was they were saying, some big countries, they are doing international policy, they think to make the better solution to better situation of the conflicted area. But everybody, the leaders were saying, they don't understand our culture mm -hmm. because they don't understand us. They do something they think good, but it doesn't work for us. So that this kind of conflict going on and on, and I start thinking, well, we should have leaders who has better understanding of each other, the cultures. Otherwise, everybody tried to solve the issues on their own perspective, which mm -hmm. may not work, but they don't even realize. So I thought as an educator, we should prepare our future generation to be going that direction. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to do direct communication? So at the time, I had a moment to see a Korean salaryman using tr public transportation. He was studying English in cell phone. Then my like, uh, flash kind of idea, students who were sitting here in their playground and everywhere, working on certain kind of mobile devices. And actually they were working on school project. It was a kind of image for me. And then I just got that idea, okay, let's use the internet and connect the schools and provide uh, the activity as a school activity. So that's why IVECA 
was <laughs> established in that way. Yeah. And good. then I thought, because I haven't really studied about the education technology, and I really don't know about other educational systems, because you cannot really implement certain educational program without knowing other countries' educational system. So I decided to learn about international comparative education and also instructional technology. So that's why I came to U US and studied my graduate tenure Mm -hmm. And the research became a foundation of uh, IVECA program. And the rest is history. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. That's right. And our viewers can go to your website, iveca.org, mm -hmm. iveca.org, to get more information. Uh, you, you hit upon several interesting points. One in particular is that uh, the first rule of thumb for anybody, be it a business wanting to move into another country to set up business, for, or even for a tourist who wants to go overseas or someone who wants to come to the United States, it's always a very good idea to research that country to learn about the, the culture, to learn about the history, to learn about the mores and the folkways of that particular entity, that, that nation or state or wherever you're going, and that's extremely important. Now, you've mentioned it, it's your connecting students. Mm -hmm. uh, roughly, how many students and professors or do you have that you're communicating with to bring them together to talk about these intercultural activities? I see. So for me, I don't really pay attention to the number, but mm -hmm. I see how what they get out of this program. So when I recall, I can tell our uh, the number of students and professors and teachers by the program, num the number of programs. So we've been uh, implementing over 200 programs for K through 12 and university, and also almost like 80 programs for teacher training. So if, if we put all together, it's going to be about 300 programs over almost mm -hmm. 10 years. And because we are partnering up the classrooms, it became doubled. So when I see the, our virtual classroom, the regis registration, uh, the number, is students is about like 10,000 10, uh, students have been mm -hmm. uh, impacted by our program. And the teachers, of course, we have like 100 schools have been uh, involved and we train not only those teacher who's going to do the program, but also the school community as well. So it's going to be, yes, a thousand uh, teachers also have been involved. Mm -hmm. And on your website, you had that there are four main points in developing intercultural competence. Mm -hmm. And the first one is direct communication. Mm -hmm. how, how do you define direct communication and, and what's an example of that? So, uh, as I briefly mentioned at mm -hmm. the beginning, direct communication has been uh, recommended by scholars and also empirically. Um, as a most effective uh, way to build intercultural competence. It is because if you are using medium, there will be another perspective to it. You are going to be influenced by somebody else's perspective on certain issues. But when you are directly communicating with each other, you really purely learn about each other. And then also you can have a reflection on yourself by directly communicating with each other. So the best way is not from the book, it is not from somebody else's media uh, mm -hmm. delivery. Mm -hmm. It is from your own uh, communication with people from that culture. So that's direct communication. And my experience, is, as I said, uh, before when I was in Korea, I was a quite good student. <laughs> and I'm sure you were. Yeah, yes. I always, uh, many Korean students, they yeah. study for good test score. Mm. So I was one of those. Study for the test. That's right, <laughs> without knowing test. real world what's happening. Mm. So then I realized the realization happened when I really started communicating with expatriate teachers. At the time, the teacher, but I already grown up, so it became, they became my friends. And they gave me very open uh, perspective how they see Korea as expatriate and as an like English-speaking uh, person. And it was really different because one thing I couldn't understand at the time, but later on I realized was those expatriates, what they were saying is, at the time, Koreans were very defensive about their culture. Whenever they get criticized by others, they always get kind of upset mm -hmm. and they try to persuade others to un realize they were wrong and that <laughs> Korea is good. <laughs> so they couldn't really openly communicate with the Korean people. And I could see the reason is because Korean people never had a chance to communicate with people from different cultures. One of the most homogeneous country in the whole world. I just learned recently, North Korea is number one homogeneous country. 
Uh, second is South Korea. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they very much emphasize on the same blood, same race. Mm -hmm. So they never really s had a chance to communicate with others directly. They just read certain things for the test and book. It doesn't give them any uh, uh, opportunity, to, opportunity mm -hmm. to build up intercultural s sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And they just passively re receive knowledge. So to really understand the intercultural differences and similarities, you need to have direct communication mm -hmm. as a best tool, because not everybody can have direct communication opportunity. So if you can make some learning situation to be more direct, that's why actually IVEC was that's established. A good idea. Yeah, good the virtual idea. platform. Yes. So that will be a more effective way of uh, right. building intercultural competence. That's direct communication. I see. Now, the second point is holistic, mm -hmm. a comprehensive, mm -hmm. universal approach. And I think under holistic, you have like five points or something like that. H how do you define this exactly. holistic? approach. When I was introducing this program at the beginning of my work as an NGO, uh, one principal told me immediately, oh, that was the reason our intercultural education ha had not been working. What he was telling me is he was emphasizing on skill building. Mm -hmm. So he kind of provides some situation and it let students kind of uh, kind of coordinate some traditional party and celebrations at the school and then how to greet each other using different uh, languages for the people from different culture. But he realized it never worked, just kind of happening event. And then when he was introduced the holistic approach from me, he said that would be the one. And I can say why. Intercultural competence it is not only about knowledge or skill, it has five dimensions. Number one is knowledge, and two, skill, and three, attitude. Four, most importantly, awareness, self-awareness, and language proficiency. Intercultural competence is about the ability to communicate and collaborate appropriately and effectively with the people from different culture or who may use different languages to work on issues or problem, uh, to solve problem creatively based on mm -hmm. understanding of cultural diversity. Under, not only understanding, also respect. So how you're gonna have this kind of ability without knowing information of different culture? So that's knowledge. So you have to have information of different culture and phenomena. And then it, just knowing it doesn't make any uh, action happen. That's do, behavior, skill. So skill has to be there. You have to know what's going on in different country, and then you have to be able to uh, work on that issue and solve the problem, that skill. And how you're gonna do, how you feel about it. Are you feeling motivated or interested in uh, working with the people from different culture? That's attitude. Attitude involved before the activity, during the activity, and after the activity. Before, are you interested in? During, are you enjoying it? After, are you confident about dealing with intercultural collaboration and issues, uh, problem solving? That's attitude. And then all those things are very much basic uh, dimension of the learning, but awareness is the most important part. As a teacher, you may say, students, intercultural competence is very important. You need to know this information, and you need to solve mm -hmm. this problem skill. But what if students doesn't find that is a very valuable thing to do? And they don't know why they are doing it. That's awareness, self-awareness. Self-awareness is all about critically looking at themselves and set up the perspective, who they are, what, are the, what the important values are in the world, why I'm learning, why I'm doing this. That's self-awareness. When you have those awareness, you will want to know information. You want to solve the problem together with uh, motivation, attitude. Then you are going to really uh, make things work out, action. That's four dimension. Language proficiency, there are some controversial <coughs> perspective on that, whether we are going to include language proficiency into intercultural competence or out of intercultural competence. But there's a simple example. For, uh, when I was uh, going, when I work with other people from different country using different languages, since I can speak English, I feel more confident. 
-hmm. I can understand what they are doing, their cultural background, what they really mean it when they are saying. But when I don't know their languages, I have to get interpreter. Sometimes interpreter convey the idea in the correct way, but sometimes they miss some nuance in it. So there's just some lack of confidence, intercultural confidence, and then lack of understanding. So we, I chose to include language proficiency. So there are interculturalists adding that into the five uh, intercultural competent dimension or not, but I chose to be that position. And then I really, every day, whenever I do this program, I realize language proficiency is important. It, it certainly is. That's a very comprehensive approach. Mm -hmm. Well, you're watching Global Connections Television, which is a privately funded, independently produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections are solely those of the moderator and his guests. We invite our viewers to go to our website at www.globalconnectionstelevision.com to view previous programs. Also, if you're involved with a PBS or community access television station, or perhaps you're involved with an educational institution that has an intra-campus television hookup, or you just have a website and you like our shows and you would like to share them, please feel free to do so. Global Connections Television is provided at no cost as a public service to help people better understand international issues and how they impact our lives. Today we're talking about virtual learning and we have an expert who is going to bring us up, she is bringing us up to date on a wide range of issues that apply to this. Uh, Dr. Onhee Chong is the founder, chairperson, and president of IVECA, the Intercultural Virtual Exchange of Classroom Activities. This is a very interesting topic, a very important topic. Now you, you have your, your operation, you have IVECA, but you're also, you're involved with other groups too. You network with other groups. One is the uh, United Nations. You're involved with the Economic and Social Council, which is one of the six organs of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. uh, you're also involved with the Department for Public Information at the United Nations. What, how do you bring IVECA into these two I instruments within the UN? Thank you so much for asking the question because uh, from the very beginning when I was implementing IVECA, uh, my research also suggests it has to be systematically implemented throughout the education system. So even before uh, IVECA was affiliated with the United Nations, ECOSOC and DPI, I was suggesting there should be a way each member state should uh, integrate this idea into their education system. So one of the reasons I was affiliated with the United Nations is because United Nations provide good platform, especially ECOSOC, uh, invite NGO representative to the high level member states forum that issue could be from education to everything. So I, with our uh, other NGO uh, network, we usually submit statement to suggest what kind of education or what kind of concept would, should be implemented into the nation's education or their economic uh, policy creation. So ECOSO provide very good platform for us, IVECA actually, to learn about each nation's very specific needs and emphasis in their education, especially for me in education. Mm -hmm. And also these days they are working on sustainable development uh, achievement. So it's very good to understand where those nations are so that we can use that uh, when we are partnering up the school and then provide very practical curriculum. Students can work on their country's very much important issues together having others' perspective. So ECOSO platform provide uh, Iveka uh, with a very good information about the world and also we can uh, share our voice emphasizing global citizenship and edu education is very important. Mm -hmm. And DPI actually provide very practical platform. Uh, Iveka as a Iveka representative to the United Nations DPI, uh, I actively participate in co uh, conference organization like mm -hmm. sometimes I become a member of the program committee subcommittee and suggest some uh, workshop or the round table that could be really impactful uh, for the each countries in building uh, their educational system and also uh, mm -hmm. reaching out to the sustainable development goal. So DPI, I would say uh, IVECA used DPI to really provide the workshop and presentation on importance of the education for global citizenship uh, to the member state, also NGOs, and whole throughout the world. And while ECOSO is a platform for us, NGOs, as well as IVECA, 
to share important matter to be heard by the member states through their uh, high-level forums. So that has been very helpful platform. And sometimes I invite students and teachers to come to the UN and share their perspective and solution for the SDGs, for example. I, we did it uh, with in partnership with the corporation and also government and also NGO all together. <laughs> That's all of us <laughs> SDG right. number 17. Yeah, It's a unified effort, right? That's right. Now, are, th are the 17 sustainable development goals you mentioned a minute ago, they're, well, they, were, they came online in, what, January 1st of 2016, and they'll run to 2030, and there are 17 logical, practical goals mm -hmm. to eliminate poverty, to eradicate hunger, to preserve the oceans, combat climate change, empower women, just uh, all across the board. Very laudable goals, mm -hmm. very, very important goals. Uh, do you break them down individually, or do you just talk about the sustainable development goal concept in general, and then have the students analyze them? Mm -hmm. how, how do you f factor that in to your curriculum and to the information that you disseminate to your partners when you're sharing this information? Actually, all the ways, all as, the as, ways. As, as, you, the as you said. <laughs> okay, yeah. right. So in a very over, <laughs> overall uh, goal, as a sustainable development goal, and also like a kind of segmented goal. Mm -hmm. And because our program, in t the framework of um, designing our program, it is not a standalone program. It is integrated seamlessly with the local school curricula. So our program becomes school's curricula, actually. The so it's transformative. Uh, number one, we integrate intercultural competence five dimension uh, could be integrated into the local curricula when they are doing their local curriculum, any subject matter activity. Students at the end of the program, they're going to build up their five dimensions of intercultural competence. And then this intercultural competence, five dimensions, are objectives of our program. Sustainable development goals work as objectives of the whole world. So when we are integrating this program with a local curriculum goal, we have another goal, sustainable development goal. So it's this sustainable development goal, eventually the IVECA's uh, purpose is to promote uh, intercultural competent global citizenship for peaceful and sustainable world. That's in general a sustainable development goal. But when you are designing uh, curriculum, you should be a little more specific. Some subject area is more uh, linked to the science or technology or engineering or language arts. For example, we integrated number 13 and 15. It, do you know what this is about? <laughs> 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 Seven is like a clean energy, right. affordable clean energy, and 13, um, 13, 15, 14, this is all about the land and ocean uh, uh, and, and also environment. Yes. So when you provide this goal, how you are going to use your subject uh, matter, they study about the chemistry and physics and all the arts and everything, and how you're going to use this subject tool to mm -hmm. come up with the solution to achieve those sustainable development goals in environmental matter. So that become curriculum. So uh, to answer your question, we have overarching goal of achieving sustainable development goal to make peaceful, sustainable, just, inclusive world. But when we are designing the curriculum, we go by the each uh, goal, even targets. There is 165 targets? 169. 69 targets. Uh, 17 so goals, 169 become, because targets. Because like as we see each school's objectives, we see all those targets and the goal number as the objectives of the whole world we are desired mm -hmm. to achieve. So. When you are suggesting those individual goals, actually we find really what is the fundamental goal. We find always global citizenship under uh, sustainable development goal number four, education for global citizenship, mm -hmm. provide a fundamental philosophy for people to work together to make the better world. So that's why I was saying we are approaching in a very diverse direction. Overarching goal, specific goals, and the fundamental foundational goal. And it's very interesting when we are applying this goal into the students' collaborative, global collaborative uh, activity to solve certain issue. They find all those uh, goals are interconnected with each other. 
one case, we had the Brazilian model school. They were working on uh, number three, good health and well-being. Mm -hmm. And they were working with American Alabama students, and they tried to find out the problem. What are the problems we are having uh, health-wise in our community? They are working locally, right? But having understanding of global impact of it. Mm -hmm. Then they find out, oh, our health problem actually coming from all the garbage and the chemical, uh, harmful chemistry. So they come up with the solution, we should really take care of the waste, mm -hmm. recycling, and how you're going to use recycling. And it's related to SDG uh, 13, land, a life on land, right? Mm -hmm. So they, next year, they were working on the environmental issue they found, oh, this is actually op related to our health as well. So they uh, realized that's the things. ideal situation. They learn to, f to resolve the problem themselves. And of course, they have some assistance in doing it. But Dr. Onhee Chong, it's a fascinating topic. And I want to thank you so very much for a very interesting and a very informative program. <laughs> thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. I'm Bill Miller. Thank you for joining us today on Global Connections Television.